Sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield is best for you. First cigarette with premium quality in both regular and king size. Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to burglary detail. For the past two months, a gang of safe burglars have been operating in your city. In that time, they've hit a dozen places. You've got no lead to their identity. Your job? Get them. Here's a report never before made about a cigarette. Smoked day after day by a group of people smoking from 10 to 40 cigarettes a day for a full year. Here's Chesterfield's record. A medical specialist giving this group thorough examinations every two months for a full year reports no adverse effects to their nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfields. Don't you want to try a cigarette with a record like that? You'll find Chesterfields best for you. They're much milder, with an extraordinarily good taste. And for your pocketbook, Chesterfield is America's best cigarette buy. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, August 10th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Wisdom. My name's Friday. We were on the way back from lunch, and it was 1.17 p.m. when we got to room 45. Burglary. Joe, you got any stomach pills? No, I haven't. You got trouble again? Yeah. I don't know why I always do when we have lunch at Sal's. Must be that cheesecake, Joe. It happens every time. Well, maybe if you just stick to one piece, huh? The way Rosie makes it, you can't stop there. You know, that Sal could make a fortune if he'd realize it. What do you mean? Well, you know how in some places they have a little bowl of mints by the cash register? Yeah. Well, if Sal had put a bowl of stomach pills, he could clean up. Yeah, sure. Anything in the book? I'll take a look. How about it? Yeah. There's a call here from Ernie. Our informant? Yeah. Says he wants to see us this afternoon. Say what it's about? No, it just has to meet him at that coffee place over on 7. Sure hope he can come up with something we could use it. Yeah. We've taken a lot on this one, haven't we? Yeah. The way the papers talk, you'd think we were in with the thieves. Now, from where they sit, it probably looks that way. We sure haven't been able to stop them. Yeah. You hear anything more on that last run from the stats office? Yeah, nothing. They've run the M.O. over and over. We can't make it. I saw the skipper this morning. He's sore, too. Yeah, it figures they're leaning on him, too. Well, there's got to be a break somewhere along the line. Their luck can't hold out forever. Maybe they don't know that. Did you check the F.I. cards from last night? Yeah, they're doing it now. They might come up with something. How about rubles and toll? You heard from them yet? No, they're running down that report from the liquor store owner. Doesn't look like it's going anywhere either. I'll get it. All right. Burglary Smith. Oh, yeah, did you find anything? Uh-huh. Where was that? Uh-huh. How do you spell that last name? S-O-N? Right. Okay, thanks. Well, we might have something. Yeah. Officer made a field interrogation report on an Otto Bronson last night. Time was listed as 10.46 p.m., 4th and Central. Well, that's close. The last heist was at 7th and Central at approximately 11 p.m. Well, how's this Bronson fit in? Well, they checked him out. He's got a record. Yeah. Burglary. 1.35 p.m. Frank and I checked the name Otto Bronson through R&I. We found that he had an arrest record dating back 10 years. He'd been picked up three times on suspicion of violation of Section 459 P.C., He'd been convicted once and had served time at San Quentin. He'd been released four months before he served his full term and was not on parole. We got his last known address from his ex-convict registration and we drove out to see him. The address listed was a rooming house on Alexandria Street. We talked to the landlady, but she could tell us nothing about him. She said that he'd moved in about four months before, and in that time she'd seen very little of him. He didn't eat at the house, but he took his meals outside. 
She was unable to tell us what time Bronson had come home the night before. He was registered in room 2B. Frank and I went up and knocked on the door. Yeah? You out of Bronson? Yeah, what about it? Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. Okay, go ahead. Might be better if we talked inside, huh? Well, maybe I don't want any cops in my place. No, we can talk downtown. Come on in. All right, what's it all about? I wonder if you could tell us where you were last night. Why? We'd like to know. Well, let's see, I went downtown, had dinner, met some friends, had a few drinks and came home. What time did you get home? Oh, maybe about eight, around in there. We got word you were seen downtown at 1046. How about it? Maybe my watch stopped. Were you downtown? Oh, you guys know all the answers. You tell me. All right, mister, get your hat. Why? Let's go downtown. All right, all right. So I was there. What's that prove? Why'd you lie about it? I didn't lie. I told you. My watch stopped. Yeah, according to the FI report, you were stopped in the corner of 4th and Central. Is that right? I don't know. I guess so. Why? What were you doing there? I was on my way home. From where? Like I told you, I had a couple of drinks with some friends of mine. I came right home. Mm -hmm. Where'd you meet these friends of yours? Bar down in Central. Which bar? I don't know the address. I can show you if you gotta know. Who were the friends? Look, I, I don't like any of this. You guys come in here and asking all these questions? What's it all about? The liquor store safe was burglarized near 7th and Central last night. You look good for the job. Boy, it's sure true. What's that? Old well, saying up at the joint. Do a little time and you'll have every cop in the world on your back at one time or another. How long you lived here, Bronson? A couple of months. That's the closet over here. Now, you stay away from there. It isn't anything in there that matters to you. Well, then you shouldn't mind if we take a look. Now, just keep your hands off of my stuff, huh? If you haven't done anything, you got nothing to worry about, have you? It isn't what I've done. It's what you guys are going to say I did. How about this, Bronson? That's mine. Hey, now, look. You got no right to go... See what's in it, Frank. Yeah. How about this, Bronson? I never saw those before in my life. It's a frame you guys are trying to tie on to me. Well, it won't work, cops, and you know it won't. How do you explain these two? I don't have to. They belong to a friend. He asked me to take care of them. How about this, Bronson? Can't see, Joe. What is it? Cutting torch. Looks like it's been used lately. 2.15 p.m. We searched the suspect's room. We found nothing further that would tie him in with the burglaries. We talked to the other people in the boarding house, but they couldn't give us any further information. They were unable to tell us if Bronson had any friends, and the landlady told us that he hadn't gotten any mail since he'd been there. We called the office and arranged for a stakeout on the boarding house, and then we took the suspect downtown to the city hall. We talked to him for an hour, 4.16 p.m. That's where you stand on this thing, Bronson. Now you make up your mind. You want to take the beef by yourself, you're going to tell us where you got the tools. I've been telling you. I didn't know anything about the tools. I got them from a friend. He asked me to keep the suitcase for him as a favor. He asked me to keep them for him, and that's all I know. Well, what's the friend's name? Like I told you, it's a fellow named Shorty. What's his last name? I don't know. If I knew, I'd tell you. I got no reason to hold back on it. I didn't have nothing to do with the jobs. Otto, we were talking to you about one burglary. What do you mean by jobs? Well... Just the way you guys talk, I figured there was more than one. You know what we're talking about. I don't. I'm telling you the truth. I don't. When'd you last see this shorty? When he gave me the suitcase. When was that? A week, maybe ten days ago. Where'd you see him? In a bar down on 7th. And he just gave you the suitcase, asked you to take care of it for him? Is that what you expect us to believe? That's the truth. Well, that's kind of hard well, to buy. I can't help that. That's the way it happened. Well, your friend sure left you in a good fix, didn't he? What do you mean? Well, it looks like you're going to have to go this route by yourself. How do you figure that? You got the tools, you got a record. You were in the vicinity just before the safe was burned. You look real good for it. Well, I ain't gonna take it alone. Well, you haven't got much choice. Well, what happens if I help you get the rest of them? It'll be marked down that way. Is that all you can do? That's all. Mm, how much if I help you break the gang? That's all we can do. Well, one thing you gotta understand. What's that? I had nothing to do with the jobs myself. I, I just heard a few rumbles. You gotta know I wasn't in on it. What have you heard? Well, there's three guys. They're from the East. They've been working out here about um, six weeks. Real heavy fellas. Who are they? I don't know him. The only one I ever saw was Shorty, and I'm not too sure he's in on it. You know where we can pick him up? No, well, like I said, I, I just heard a few rumbles. All right, how about this Shorty? Has he got a record? I don't know. He might have. You ever say anything about doing time? Mm, no, not so I can hear. How long you known him? About three months. I met him right after I got out of Cuba. Where'd you meet him? A bar downtown. We got to talking one night, and after that, I'd see him around here and there. And I never got to know him real well. Just well enough for him to give you a suitcase full of burglar tools, huh? Yeah, that's right. And you didn't know what was in the case? Huh? No, I didn't look. I didn't figure it was any of my business. That's easy to buy, isn't it? Well, I can't help it. That's the way it is. How much do you know about how the gang works? Not much. Rumble is that they case a place for a couple of days, figure out when's the best time to hit it, and they walk in and burn the safe. They use a car? I don't know. I guess they do. Does Shorty have a car? I don't know. I never saw him with one. He never mentioned it. You ever mentioned where he lived? No, not to me. I, I figure it's over on the east side, though. How do you figure that? Well, 
Just the way he talked. Nothing definite, but just the idea. You look at some mugs and tell us if you see this, Shorty? Well, sure. I'd like to see you get him, leaving me to stand for a thing like this all by myself. Anything else you can tell us about the game? No, that's about it. Okay, let's look at the mugs. Well, how about it? I, I still got to go to jail? Well, you still haven't convinced us you're clean. Well, I told you everything I know. Yeah, let's go. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Look, I go nuts in a cell. You should have thought of that before. Well, I can give you guys a lot of help if I'm on the outside. You haven't given us much here. Well, maybe I can. All right, go ahead. I can tell you when you're going to pull the next job. <laughs> We continued to talk to Otto Bronson. He told us that he'd heard the gang was planning to rob the safe of a large chain grocery store in the southern part of the city. He gave us the date and the time that the operation was expected to take place, but he was unable to give us the exact details of how the burglary would be committed. The suspect couldn't tell us whether a car would be used or how the store would be approached. He was unable to give us a description of the other two men in the operation, but he did give us a description of Shorty. We ran the name through the moniker file in r and We got back 285 possibles and had the mug shots on the suspects pulled. These were shown to Bronson, but he failed to make an identification. We showed him our mug files on known burglary suspects, but he again failed to come up with an identification. The burglary tools were booked as evidence, and then Frank and I talked with Captain Wisdom. It was agreed that it might be better to release Bronson and have him followed. 8.31 p.m. The suspect was released and placed under constant surveillance. The date Bronson had given us for the next burglary was the following Saturday, August 14th. Frank and I made arrangements to place a stakeout on the store. We checked the store and found that there were two entrances, one off the parking lot to one side of the building and one on the street. We took up our position so that both doors could be seen. The area was placed under a Code 5 call so that the stakeout would not be burned. Frank and I waited. 10 p.m., 11, no sign of the burglars. Midnight came and went. At 5.30 a.m., the stakeout was called off, and Frank got to a phone. Yeah, uh uh-huh. When was that? Yeah? Okay, we'll be right in. Joe. Yeah, anything? Yeah, they lost the tail on Bronson. At approximately 10.30 Saturday night, Otto Bronson had gone into a theater on South Spring Street. The officer following had entered, but had lost the suspect in the darkness. The next morning, Sunday, August 15th, we got a report that Bronson had turned up at his rooming house at 7.45 a.m. I got a call from the business office with this information, and at 8.20, I picked up Frank, and we drove over to see Bronson. Who's there? It's Friday. Oh, just a minute. Hi. Come on in. Well, you guys are up early this morning. How'd it turn out last night? What are you trying to pull, Bronson? What do you mean? You know what we're talking about. Nothing happened last night. Hey, you you mean they didn't break into the place? That's it. I can't understand that. From what I heard, they had it all cased. Where were you last night? Well, you figure I had something to do with it, huh? We just asked you where you were. Oh, what's the matter? Hey, the tale you had on me get lost? We're waiting for an answer, Bronson. Went to a movie and then came on home. You came right home after the picture, huh? Yeah, that's right. Right home. How come it took you so long? Now, what's that mean? You didn't get home until this morning, did you? You guys are pretty thorough, aren't you? Where were you? All right, I stopped and saw a friend. We got to drinking. Forgot all about time. That makes me a pigeon for you. Come on, Bronson. Let's go down to... What for? I haven't done anything. You gave us wrong information about last night. Well, that's not my fault. I'm not running with the guys. I told you what I heard. Now, it's not my beef that it didn't work out. From what I knew, that was the way it was going to be. All right, let's go. Well, now, just a minute. Look, we can work this out, huh? I'm afraid not. Well, I leveled with you guys. I'm not giving you a snow job. That's the way it is. Now, look, you got nothing on me. If you had, you wouldn't have let me go before. Now that I think about it, I don't like the idea of the tail on me. What are you guys going to prove with that? The way you act, it's no wonder you get no cooperation from anybody. It's no wonder at all. All right, now you've made your point. Let's go downtown. Yeah, who is it? Mr. Bronson, it's me, Kelly. It's a landlord. Yeah, what is it? Hey, Mr. Friday here? Yeah, I'm Friday. Phone call for you. You can get it here in the hall. Thanks. You can get it here. Thank you. This is Friday. Yeah. Mm hmm. When? Right. We'll be right there. Thanks a lot. Frank? Yeah. It's the business office. We got to leave. Yeah? You called it, Bronson. They worked last night, all right? See, I told you. Yeah, we staked out in South L.A. So? They hit in West L.A. You are...
are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. Chesterfield is best for you. Chesterfield regular or Chesterfield king size, which contains tobaccos of better quality and higher price than any other king size cigarette. And always remember this. Chesterfield is first to give you premium quality in both regular and king size. Just as Chesterfield has been first to name its ingredients, the ingredients that make the best possible smoke. Enjoy your smoking. Change to Chesterfield. Much milder with an extraordinarily good taste. The best for you. a.m. Frank and I contacted the West Los Angeles detectives and drove out to the scene of the latest burglary. It was a large chain grocery store. The thieves had burned into the safe, and the M.O. was the same as in the other burglaries. All the contents of the safe worth anything had been removed. The crews from the crime lab and latent prints had already finished their investigation and had gone back to go over their findings. Frank and I talked to the manager of the store, Mr. Charles Gleason. Well, let me see, Sergeant. Uh, The first I knew about it was when they called me to say that the safe had been robbed. Mm Mm-hmm. Any idea how much was taken? Well, I'd just be guessing with the officers working around here. I didn't get a chance to check it yet, but I'd say about uh, five or six thousand dollars. The weekend and all, we'd done a pretty good business, and I didn't get a chance to get to the bank. I had all that money in the safe. Of course, I'll have to check the books to tell you exactly how much they took, but like I said, it was probably five or six thousand dollars. Do you have a burglar alarm system in the store, Mr. Cleason? I beg your pardon? I said, do you have a burglar alarm system in the store? Yes, and that's a funny thing. I can't understand why it didn't work. The officers uh, who were here from your crime lab, is that it? Yeah, that's right, sir. Well, they said that evidently it had been turned off somehow. I don't understand it, but that's what they said. I see. I wonder if you could give us a list of your employees. Well, yes, certainly, but uh, you don't think that any of them had anything to do with this, do you? Well, they've all got to be checked out, sir. Can you give us the list? Oh, well, yes, I can. I guess that's right, but I, I'm sure that none of them were involved. Well, Mr. Gleason, have you noticed anyone hanging around the store, anyone that might have looked suspicious to you that you can remember? It'd be awfully hard to say. We do a lot of business with all the people who come in and out. It's kind of hard to say. Yes, sir, we understand. But could you remember, was there anyone who attracted your attention? Maybe someone unusual, somebody loitering in the neighborhood, maybe around the store? No, sir, not that I can think of. Mm-hmm. Was there anything that was taken from the safe that might give us a lead, something that might not ordinarily be in there, something that uh, you could identify easily? No, I don't think so, just the money. Uh, Of course, there were several checks, you know, once... What did you say? uh, Checks that we cashed for the customers, they might have totaled uh, $500. I can give you a list of them. We have them photographed if you want copies of them. Yes, sir, that would be a big help. Oh, Officers, there was one more thing. Yes, sir, what was that? Well, you know how people lose things. Yes, sir. A couple of days ago, we found a watch. It looked expensive. We found it in the back of the store. Uh, that was in the safe, too. Everything's gone. Must have taken that to it, isn't there now? Well, can you give us a description of the watch? Yes, I can. I noticed it because, <laughs> well, to be honest, I was kind of hoping that nobody would claim it. You keep things like that around here for a couple of days and then turn them into you. I'd like to have had that one myself. Certina, it was a gold case with a white face. Only had a few numbers. You know, uh, some of the spots were just the little gold spots. Yeah, I mean the spots were... The the numbers, the numbers, the little gold spots. I know what you mean, sir. Well, this one had a gold band, and uh, it was one that was a kind of a a chain thing, not an expansion band. You know, the the chain, the gold chain? Yes, sir. Would you know the watch if you saw it again? Oh, sure. I looked at it enough. And then there was that scratch on the crystal, too. Sir? We're right over the number, too. There was a scratch. I can show you right here on my watch. You see right, right there, a little scratch? Mm-hmm. It was, kind of went off at an angle. It was real easy to spot. Yes, sir, I understand. You know, it's a funny thing, you officers being here. There's a friend of mine once. Well, <laughs> I just soon not mention his name if you don't mind, because he was innocent, you know, but he, he it looked bad. I was kind of worried about it myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, th- these officers came out to his house, just took the place apart. It was all right. It was perfectly legal. They had a search warrant. What'd they come out for? Well, they thought he was mixed up in a robbery. Oh. I don't know how they ever thought it, but it, it, it looked suspicious, I guess. He was seen with some characters that were, well, you know, not very nice. And they came out to his house, took the whole place apart. You never saw such a mess in your life. Ripped up the mattresses, took down a pit, ruined the picture. A beautiful picture, end of the trail. You know the one with the Indian, yes, sir. the spear going down like that? Yes, sir. Took that apart, the whole picture just fell apart. They never could get it back together hmm. again. I don't know whether they can get another one or not. Mm-hmm. The darnest mess anything? you ever saw, huh? I say, did they find anything? 
The money? Yeah, yeah, they did. They found a fountain pen his wife had lost two years ago. Had her initials on it. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, is there anything else you can think of that would help us here? No, not that I can figure. Well, if you do remember anything, sir, here's our card. We'd certainly appreciate a call. Frank Smith, just ask for you, huh? Yes, sir, and if we're not there, just leave a message and we'll get in touch with you. All right, I'll do that. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Gleason. You bet. I sure hope you catch the fellows that are doing that. Yes, sir, so do we. Yes, you've been after him quite a while now, huh? Yes, sir, we have. <laughs> what the papers say, this makes number 13 for him. Bad number 13, kind of unlucky. No worse than number one. <laughs> Frank and I went back to the city hall and completed our crime report. We contacted the crime lab and Leighton Prince and found that they'd come up with no physical evidence at the scene. From the M.O., it could be definitely established that they were the same suspects we were after. We obtained a list of the employees of the store and checked them out. We came up with no new leads. A list of the checks that had been taken from the safe were given to forgery detail. Frank and I went to Otto Bronson's rooming house and brought him down to the city hall for questioning. You know, maybe if you guys had spent a little more time doing your job and less time bothering me, you'd end up catching those fellas. Don't worry about it, Bronson. We'll get them. We'd like to go over what you did last night again. I told you what. Well, tell us again, will you? All right. Like I said, I had dinner around 8, maybe 8.30. Where'd you eat? A place over on Spring. See anybody you knew? No, I don't think I did. Where'd you go then? I went to a movie, a place on 7th. See anybody you knew there? No. Well, then you'd have a tough time proving where you were, wouldn't you? Not it? all the way. You had a tail on me. Most of this you know already. All you know, right. What would... did you do after you left the movie? I, I told you that. I went over to see a friend. Yeah, where's he live? A hotel on 5th. What's his name? Oh, look, I don't want to see him dragged into this. If he's clean, he's got nothing to worry about, huh? Yeah, sure, but you guys go over and talk to him. It's a lot of embarrassment for him, and I, I just don't want it. All right, let's go. Oh, now, you going to book me? That's it. I told you what being in a cell does to me. You should have thought about that before. All right, I'll tell you who he is. Well, go ahead. His name's Anderson, Mark Anderson. You ever fallen? No, he's clean. You sure about that? Yeah. No, I suppose you want to go over and talk to him, huh? Yeah, we'll get to it. You still going to book me? We haven't any choice. Look, I told you what I know, Sergeant. I told you everything. I can't help it if I was wrong. Look, it's no crime to make a mistake, is it? I never read about no law that says you can't make a mistake. Well, why don't you, know, you tell us the truth about what you know about these burglaries, I then? I told you, I told you. What you told us we can't buy. Well, that's tough, fella, but that's the way it is. Now, I told you what I know. There isn't any more. Now, if you want, go on. Check with Mark Anderson. He'll, he'll tell you I was with him all night. He'll tell you. I, I don't want no trouble, you guys. He, he'll tell you, and that's the truth. Really, I, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> 6.40 p.m., we booked Otto Bronson at the main jail on suspicion of burglary. Before he was put in his cell, we got the address of Mark Anderson. After we'd finished with the booking, Frank and I drove over to the hotel on 5th Street. Anderson was registered in room 812. The desk clerk told us that Anderson was in his room. He was unable to tell us much about Anderson because, as he explained, he'd only worked at the hotel for a week and hadn't seen much of him. We went upstairs and knocked at the door. Yeah? You Mark Anderson? That's right. Who are you? Police officers. I'd like to talk to you. Sure, come on in. This is my partner, Frank Smith. Hi, yeah, sir. What do you want to see me about? You know a fellow named Bronson, Otto Bronson? Yeah, sure, I know Otto. When did you see him last? Hey, what's this all about, anyway? Otto done something? Just a routine investigation, Anderson. When was the last time you saw Bronson? Routine, huh? That's right. I saw him last night. Where'd you see him? Here, he came up, sat around, killed a bottle, talked it up. Mm -hmm. What time did he leave here? Hmm, must have been about 7.30 this morning, something like that. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Glad to help out whenever I can. Otto isn't in any trouble, is he? Like we said, it's just routine. Mm -hmm. Well, anything more I can do to help out, you let me know. Huh? Yeah, we'll do that. You leaving right away? Yeah, that's right. We'll be getting back to the office. Well, I'll get my coat and walk down with you. I got a date in 15 minutes. Gonna have to romp on It's a nice or... watch you got there. Yeah, it's new. Let me take a look at it, will you? Well, it's just a watch. If you don't mind, I like to get going. Let me see the watch. Sure, no reason you can't. Here. Okay. You said this was new? Yeah. Just got it a couple days ago. Mm hmm Did you notice the scratch on the crystal here? Hmm. Yeah, I never saw that before. Guess I'll have to take it back and get another one. Let me see it, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Did you buy this watch? Yeah. Where? Well, jewelers down the street. You get a receipt for it? No, I didn't. I know the guy. I didn't figure I'd need one. What if we could take a look through your room? Why? What are you looking for? Just like take a look. You got a search warrant? No, we can get one if we have to. 
Well, then you better go get one. I'm not having any cops looking through my stuff. Frank? Yeah? I told you to get a warrant. You got no right to look in there. Something in the closet you don't figure we should see. No, is it's it? not that. It's just... Well, then a... there's no problem, is it? Joe, yeah. a couple of suitcases. You want to bring them out? Yeah. Here they are. This one's kind of heavy. It feels like there's some sort of tools in it. And open it up. Wait a minute. You got the key for this one, Anderson? There's nothing in there for you. We'll figure that, huh? Joe, looks like this other one's open. Now, about this, Anderson. Money here and these checks. Watch, Joe. All right, Anderson. <laughs> All right, come on, get up. Get up. I'll shake him, Joe. Yeah, he's clean. Stand still. All right, Anderson, let's go. Otto told you, didn't he? A lousy little sneak, he told you. I never did trust him. I kept telling Shorty, I kept telling him we shouldn't trust him. Who's Shorty? Shorty Miller. Want to tell us where we can find him? Sure, I got nothing to lose. Lousy little Otto. Just the three of you in on the job? Yeah, that's all. Otto, Shorty, and me, just the three of us. Him and his big ideas. How he had it all fixed up when you tagged him. How he was going to get us in the clear. Don't worry, he said. He'd take care of everything. Lousy liar. He'd fix it for us. That's real funny. Shouldn't be. What? He fixed it. The story you have just heard was true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 14th, trial was held in Department 87, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. I've been pleased to see how many of you king-size smokers have been changing to Chesterfield. It's just as I've been telling you, king-size Chesterfields contain tobaccos of better quality than any other king-size cigarette. Either way you like them, regular or king-size, Chesterfields have a better taste, and they're really milder. Otto N. Bronson, Mark A. Anderson, and Samuel R. Miller were tried and found guilty of nine counts of burglary with explosives. They received sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary with explosives is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than ten, nor more than forty years. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Vic Perrin, Stacey Harris. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. For a million laughs, tune in Chesterfield's Martin and Lewis show Tuesday on this same NBC station. And sound off for Chesterfield's. Either regular or king size, you'll find premium quality Chesterfield's much milder. Chesterfield is best for you. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet transcribed from Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever and whenever people need help, the Red Cross answers the call. When a flood-stricken family needs shelter, when a crippled child must learn to walk and play, and when a wounded soldier needs blood, the Red Cross is always there. And now the Red Cross needs your help. To keep up their many services this year, $93 million is needed. So when the Red Cross volunteer calls on you, please answer the call and give generously. Thank <laughs> you.